What is up, everyone? Welcome to episode 160 of the Bench Time Podcast with Todd and Brett Wiley of Wiley's Scale Modeling. Yeah! 160! Yeah. Okay. 160 um, is 10 more than 150. It is. It's so 60 more than 100. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. so... What's new? Anything new? Oh, man. So I am... Wrapping up the Campbell Skill model kit, which yeah. you know was an interesting build for me. Um, interesting. So it's, a, it's let's go there. It's a. Well, I know you were going there, but let's uh, let's go a little deeper there. All right, let's so, go deep. Let's go deep. So let's uh, <laughs> let's you know we're talking. It's an old kit. So how you know when do you think that thing was produced? It's what kit? What kit? What's the name of the kit? Um, I think it was uh, Brett's Brewery. Let Brett's me look Brewery. it up. All right. Brett's Brewery Campbell's Scale Models. I bet you it was in 82. Now, are the walls, were they laser cut? No. No. So so how were they cut? The, they, I don't know. I mean, how did George... It's been a while since I did one of these. How things. did George and him do those? They were just, I mean, they were, they were cut, like on a, I'm, well, I'm guessing a saw. Built, Baxter's was laser cut. The walls were laser cut. So the, his, some of his, some of his special ones were done laser cutting. I don't know when it was built. I mean, it's but probably the, on the, the instructions. The windows were already cut out for you, right? Uh, no. No. Oh, okay. No, the windows were like half etched. Oh, they're half etched and you got to run your knife. Yeah, in. you got to cut them yeah, out. I remember doing that. That's a pain that in the butt. That sucks. Because you got to be real, real careful, too. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Them. And that wood is, ha- what, we're talking 40 years old, almost 40 years old, 38 years old. Yep. So, yeah, you know, and it becomes, after time, even especially sitting in, even if it was kept nice, it's still 38 years old but sitting in a box. So, so the Campbell scale model... Uh, from what I can tell, looks like it was built. The uh, Brett's Brewery looks like it was manufactured in '74. Yeah, about right, Around there. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so I'm not a fan of hand that's cutting. A nuts. What? That is a little nuts. Yeah, that that kit's 15 years older than me. You 70, were you, you were 74. 74. So that's even older than 40 years. Yeah. So, well, yeah, if it's 15 years older than me. I thought you said 82. I was guessing. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so 74. Oh, damn. I was 10. So. That kit has seen a lot of history. That's right. So, you know, so you had to cut them. So you have a 50-year-old. Let's say it's almost 50 years old. Well, 50, yeah. Oh, this is 74 for, yeah, it's 26. Yeah, so it's 46 years old. Okay, so it's 46 years old, uh, 47 years old, and it's wood, and it's been sitting in that box, and now it's brittle, and you got to drag your knife carefully through that. So, yeah, did, it, did you have any splits or cracks? I didn't. Oh wow, wow. No, I didn't have any splits or cracks. Uh, the the only issue I had was the windows were. The windows that were pre-cut, like yeah. halfway through, and I had to finish cutting them, weren't quite big enough. Mm-hmm. So I had to take a file and and file them to the right height. Yeah. The plastic windows that came with it were a little bit taller than the opening that was pre-cut. They usually were. Yeah, I remember that. But the other thing is that was really cool when I was handling this was, and I know it's been opened. The kit was given to us as a gift. Um, right by a listener at actually at the Timonium show. And, um, uh, that was what that was given to us la two years ago now. Yeah. Um, when we were there in person and, well, um, be, nah, uh, about a year and a half, half, year and a half. But, um, and I do appreciate that. It took me a little while to get into it, but now I'm building it. I'm having a lot of fun, but what was really cool about it. And I have this other Campbell's kit that I want to do. And I actually, think a year and two months. Well, it, Okay. Year to my, 14 months. Um, but what was really cool about it was I was 
it was neat, even though I know it had been opened previously, it had been reopened yeah. and whatever, but everything was still sealed in the original bags. Like, all the yeah. wall sections sealed in the original bags. All the detail parts, everything came in the original bags. Nothing was missing. It was pristine. It wasn't like it was opened and someone kind of maybe started it and then put it back in Ziploc bags back in the box. Like, it was... Right, right. It was the way you would have got it when you ordered it 45 years ago. And the thing that was really cool about it was... Yeah, if I felt kind of like I'm opening a little uh, piece of history with model yeah, railroading, oh, sure. and I'm taking my time with this kit and this build because, a, well, a because it's a lot more pieces than modern day kits, and b I want to do it right. Um, I did the same thing when I did the Sass and Vinegar Works from Builders and right. Scale. Yeah, I that was an old one too. It, it took me, old, but it was older. It took me two months to build that bu- building. Yeah, but I took my time. I made yeah. sure to do it right. Not that I don't do the other ones right, but I just want to make sure, like, I don't know, this kit isn't ever going to be made again. Right. Not that, you know, some of the limited run kits that we do, they'll never be made again either. And they are, I mean, they're, they're also very special to build, but right. there's something kind of nostalgic about opening up a kit that I know is older than me and um, putting it together because that will never be made. Like it'll probably never get made again unless someone buys the rights to the plans and makes them. But then it won't be the same Campbell's kit. So, yeah, you got a good point. So I'm just trying to, I mean, a lot of people buy old kits and they collect them and they never build them. Um, or they resell them for more, but what's that purpose? No, but what, what I thought was really cool is, you know, maybe there's only, I'm going to make up numbers, but maybe there's only a few hundred of them left that aren't built. Right. And I'm now making it one less available, which is kind of cool. But, you know, you got to respect the age of the kit and kind of, you know, do it justice when you're building it that way. Oh, sure. So, anyways. Yeah, but, you know, now, now, being it, it's that old and you had, you had strip wood in there, right? Yes. And that, that By the way, fine. more yeah. strip wood than anything I've seen of any, no, not, and I'm not knocking modern day kits. I was blown away. That kit came with way more strip wood than it needed. Yeah. Which is, I mean, I'm, listen, I'm not complaining. I got a whole box of extra strip wood. It's going right in my extra collection. But what was really cool was like, well, and it, well, okay. So with a kit like this, extra strip wood when you realize you have extra is awesome. Yeah. But extra strip wood when you're just getting into it and you're like trying to figure out what parts are what. And then you get it assembled and you're like, oh, sh- shit, that's a lot of extra strip wood. Did I miss something? I, I had that with the FS. What did I knit? What did I miss? What did I not put in? And then you start thinking, I must have skipped the whole thing or whatever, because I, I don't, I shouldn't have this much extra strip wood. But yeah, uh, <laughs> so at first you panic and you're like, I must have skipped something. And you read backwards through the instructions and you're like, no, it's all good. And then you just yeah. have an extra pile of strip wood laying around. Yeah, and when I finished uh, Baxter's on the FSM kit, yeah, um, I had a bo- uh, a lid. I used a box lid. I was putting the extra pieces in that were remaining. When I got done, I skipped no steps. I did exactly as is, and I had a pile of strip wood and pieces of reusable, you know, stuff to use. Um, I was shocked. It was a good deal of stuff. Yeah, and um, and I mean, you can always use some extra strip wood. Oh yeah. So you know, it went into my. I have these. Plastic cups. They look like plastic drinking cups. Uh-huh. They're made by. Uh, they actually say uh, Carolina Craftsman kits on them. And um, oh yeah, uh, Jeff I, sent us a bunch of them. Yeah, I, I have. Uh, They're cool I, paintbrush cups too. That's what I have paintbrushes in them now. Uh, I looked over. I thought my I thought my strip wood was in that. They're not. They're mason jars. Just your standard mason jar, and it's just full of strip wood. Sticking up out of the top. Yeah. You know, different different sizes of strip wood and stuff. You got to have it's little, it. It's the stuff left over from kits. Yeah. And none of that is my my pieces. I get the real long pieces that I get in stock, and I stick them up my strip wood containers by size. Okay? But over here, I, these are the scrap pieces, and they're all sticking up out of the top of this tall mason jar. So I got, I got a ton of leftover strip wood, and it's all left over from kits. But... No kit has given me enough, that much strip wood left over than that FSM kit. So it must have been something from back in the day where they give you just a little more wood to do your job, you know? And there are kits I've done where I've so, run out of strip wood. 
in the middle. Of, it, I mean, that's what I was going to say. It's really nice to have that extra stash somewhere because sometimes you got to dig through. You know what the best feeling in the world is? When you run out of strip wood on a kit and then you start yeah. digging, you're like, oh, you're in that moment of panic. You're like, oh, shit, I got to go to the craft store tomorrow. I got to go get yeah. this piece. And then you think, oh, wait, no, no, I got that cup or that bin full of strip wood. I yeah. can go. Look. And then yeah, the best feeling is you find the perfect match. Yeah. It's yeah. always a weird size. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, oh, shit, I probably don't have that size. There's no way I have exactly. this size. And then you start digging through, and you're like, oh, my God, I have I it. it. And it's an eighth of an inch longer than I need it. It's just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I have a couple. I, I went to the Dollar General, and I picked up pencil boxes Right. Um, for my – I can't put longer stuff in it because sometimes, yeah. you know, the, like the Campbell kit here has uh, – there must be 11-inch long pieces of strip wood. Right. But it doesn't fit in the pencil boxes. Uh, but um, for a dollar or two, I picked up a couple dollar store uh, pencil boxes, and I throw in uh, the smaller strip wood, the stuff that would, if you put in a cup, would get lost in the bottom. Yeah. But this is all for like two or three inches or smaller pieces of strip wood. That way I can root through it and, and kind of find little... Why not cut down those 11 inch pieces down to six, six and five inch pieces? Because, because I want to build... No, use 11 yeah, no, inch wrong. piece in one shot. Well, no, you're you're right, but but I I don't know, I just don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I keep them in That's a different okay. container. I haven't either. But, I haven't either. I'm not but, taking them. But I do think you know a, a container for your smaller pieces is good, and and I I have them sorted into two containers. I have like the I have like the scale lumber, mm-hmm. so like your scale two by fours, two by sixes, two by tens. Right. I have that in a separate box from my bracing okay. scraps. So yeah, I have three. bracing. What's that? I'm, I'm listening to you. I have bracing and corner trim in a different box because that stuff's so common. I don't need to. I just want it sorted from the odd size scale lumber. Right. You know, so I have like my my scale lumber, which is scale to size, and then I have my bracing and corner trim in a different one, yeah. just to keep them separate. That way, I'm not looking as long, and I, I know they're in two different pieces, two different boxes. So, anyways, so what, let's so get, what else is different about this kit? Because oh it's so old. Well, and I think Jason Sider pointed this out. Uh, he, I, he was laughing about. He was laughing about it. Uh, the one day I was talking about doing the Campbell's kit on uh, the Facebook group. Uh, the the smell of these Campbell kits is. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I, yeah. You can't. I can't pinpoint what that smell is. It's not a mothball. It's a weird smell. Yeah. But uh, it's got a scent. But anyways, other than that, what's different about them? I think. You know, they, they just require a little bit more, um, probably very much, I mean, it, it's very much like the Builders and Scale Kit. They take a little bit more um, thought when you're doing it, and you got to really, right. you can read the instructions, but you really got to look at the, the the elevation views that come with it on the exploded, yeah. on the exploded views of the buildings when you're putting them together, because yeah. the instructions aren't necessarily always written in a way that would be very clear um initially with what to do but once you look at the exploded views the the one thing you kind of have to do is put on a little bit of an engineering hat because it's not always explained 100 percent, you know exactly how it's supposed to go together so you have to do a little bit of finessing i think so but the instructions don't suck they're just no 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 they're just yeah. they're just more yeah. It's just more. Yeah, you have to it's think more. a little harder. You gotta, yeah, you 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 gotta put. Uh, you know the current kits that you get now, to the credit of the manufacturers making them now, they put a lot of thought into how they're assembled. Yeah, and not that the guys you know thirty, forty, fifty years ago didn't do that, but I think there's more engineering behind the current kits that are coming out now. They can yep. be there. There's a lot less. A building of the same size of what I'm building now from a Campbell's kit would come with half or a quarter of the amount of supplies that an older kit did because there's a lot more scale lumber and a lot more bracing and a lot more extra things that now they can laser cut. Yeah. Um, You know, now back then, I'm looking at my um, builders and scale kit specifically, and and the Campbell's is the same way, and I'm sure the uh, FSM kit was the same way for you. Yeah. Um, you know, if you had a, if you had a, a, a sliding garage door or a overhead door or something, you had to 
cut the scale lumber to make the pattern for the supports for the door. You know, like the X pattern. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But back, you know, you had to cut all that lumber and glue it on and make it the right angles and make sure it matches up well. Well, now these guys, they just laser cut that, and it's a couple layers. You glue it together and you slap it on the on the the, the door. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there's a little bit. There's pros and cons to it. When I think when you do it by hand on these older kits, you appreciate it a little bit more. Yeah. Because you oh, had yeah. you had to make sure the angles were right and it matched up well. Right. And Did, were there templates in this? Yeah, but they weren't to the scale. Yeah. See now, George <laughs> Celius with his uh, FSM kits on the directions, they're to scale for the templates. Okay. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, these ones weren't to scale. Which, what? Which is why these people. Which is why the people out there right now clamor and try and get a hold of every bit of directions they can. The builders and scale and ones were very good. From SFM, yeah. But, I mean, so the Campbell's ones aren't too. bad. Builders, I mean, the Campbell's... The builders and scale, builders and scale was just scale? Yeah. Yeah. Builders... So see that? They become they make them directions and, and templates and stuff become valuable then. Builders and scale was probably the most overly precise building I've ever done. Yeah, yeah. Um, the neat thing about those kind of buildings with the templates and all the directions and stuff is if there's little small details that they want you to build. Like, let's say um, a certain, I don't know, a fence or um, um, some kind of support system, and you want to put it on a different building of an entirely different shape, okay? Or you want to put it next to a building. Or if it's extra stuff that got added to the building wasn't part of the building itself. Yeah. But like details that you had to build. And they had templates for it. Those are great because you get to hold on to them. You can use them over yeah. and over again. For if other you stuff. want to put that type of, uh, a, say it's for a loading dock. Yeah. And you got to hand build the loading dock supports and all that with, you know, yeah. all this. Well, now if you want to put a loading dock on, uh, on another building you're doing. Uh, you, you can just replicate that and you know edit it to fit the current building you're doing. But now you have a lot. Now you have a template where the beams Save would go. Time. Yeah. Rather than sitting there trying to piece it all together on your own, you can you can you can use a template. And if you need to cut it down or make it longer, it'd be easier to do so. Mm-hmm. Because of the template. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I mean I think the uh, the. The older kits are awesome because they I think they make you. I, I now so I know it's I hold on almost all my hi, directions. Hindsight twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. Uh if I was getting if I was here's a piece of advice I would tell somebody who um was getting into more craftsman kits. Uh I wish I had done before I started doing modern day kits. Yeah. I wish I had forced myself then I didn't know then though, but I wish I had forced myself then to do some older kits first. Yeah, and get an appre- get the- and yeah, and get an appreciation for the older kits, and 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 also understand assembly a little better. Because I think if one thing you learn, they're trickier to assemble. Yeah, especially a more complicated building. If the building's a rectangle or a pretty basic shape, even in an older yeah. kit, it's going to be pretty much the same. But the more co- like this, Brett's Brewery has a weird, a very strange cutaway on a roof and a side building with a weird roof angle. But I got to do it all manually. The stuff now is mostly laser cut and fits together yeah. like a dream, which is awesome. Like I said, it's a engineering. It's a t- tip of the hat to the guy's brains and engineering prowess that are putting these kits together now, or, yeah. or assemb- making these kits, manufacturing these kits. But back then, you know. Those older kits, you have to use a little bit of brain power to kind of get yep. them to fit together right. Um, and sometimes you mess it up. You got to start over and get some extra cardboard and cut a new roof out. But right. I think if there's one piece of advice I'd have for someone who maybe has done a couple Craftsman kits and now they want to get better before they start doing some bigger ones, is pick up some older kits somewhere on eBay or um, at a show if we ever have a show again, and. Um, and, and get your hands on one or two Campbell's kits, or uh, if you can, if you're lucky enough to get a Franklin South Manchester kit. I mean, I'm sorry, fine scale miniature kit. Get a fine scale miniature kit. Uh, yeah. I haven't done one, but I did a Builders and Scale and a Campbell's now, and they're both. I think they both teach you. The older kits teach you more, um, like, fundamental technique. There's more it's more fundamental, fundamental techniques yeah. of actual building assembly and how to make a sound stout building 
you know. Right. Uh, so when you go back to doing a more modern, especially one, if you're going to scratch you're build, you put a little different care into building it because you pick these other techniques up. And and, and as I'm going to say, especially if you want to get good at scratch building, you should do some of these older buildings. Yeah, to just to learn the is. learn the basics of how they did it, and they almost overdid it. Well, that's what these people did back then. You see these guys on there now. These, I, I, I hesitate to call a lot of you are listening. I hesitate to call you any old timers, but you, you know, we're old timers, and we started out on those kits. So I see the the craftsmanship that's coming out on some of these people's, and I know some of these guys. Okay. So I see some of the craftsmanship they're putting out. They've been at this for years and years and years, and they're building. They're still building, um, you know, scratch built buildings. Mm-hmm. No, you know, no, no kit bashing. We're not talking kit bashing. Scratch uh, these guys are scratch building stuff, and it, it looks phenomenal. And you're like, wow. And I know for a fact these same guys used to build some. some a lot of these guys. Used to build those Campbells and you know builders and scale. Those are the ones you're talking about. The right. FSMs. That's what they did. They cut their teeth on that, and then they picked those skills up and they said, you know what? Hey, rather than me paying, you know, at the time, rather than me paying fifty bucks for this kit, you know, or forty five bucks for this kit, or whatever it was, I don't know, eighty bucks um, for the kits that are now, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars. Um, I'm going to build my own. I'm going to start building my own. I see some of these guys doing it. And I know that they started out doing the other kits, and they learned those skills doing that. You know, right? So, yeah, it's um, a good not, way. Not that you can't, not that you can't do that with today's kits. It's just that, you know, now it's you know, if you're if you're creative and you can figure it out, you can build without having a laser cutter. Yeah, um, we've we've done it. Okay, but it's you know, it's not saying that you can't do it in today's. By you know starting out only building today's you know newer laser cut kits and then going the kit bat, uh, scratch building you can do it okay it's just that those those old timer guys they've been they started out on this stuff so if you get your like you Brett said if you get your hands on some of these older kits and build just one or two of them just to pick up the you know just to pick up these uh, skills it'll definitely help everybody yeah uh, by doing that yeah well, that's cool now what what now, I know you had some fun with shingles. No, I didn't. Aha. Uh-huh. See, yeah. That's These shingles suck. Well, that's the Campbell shingles. They also come in the FSM kits. <laughs> I know that they've come in other kits as well. Uh, they're the one, the shingles that are on the spool. You want to yeah. get in that? So you get them uh, on this spool, and they are, um, how do you want to word this? As soon as you cut them off the spool, it's like, Cutting loose a, a tension spring, and they and they spring they 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 fire off this spool as fast as they can, and yep. they just create a rat's nest of uh, freaking awful. So, uh, I put mine in a ziploc bag and just pull them out of a ziploc bag. Oh my god, I did the same thing. But I put it in a small plastic bag and I just pull it out a little bit at a time. I mean, I if I didn't put them in a container or a bag, they'd have rolled all over my workbench and gotten even more tangled than they already were it looked like a bird's nest so they're a pain to work with um i i don't ever ever I, the next kit i do which is the firehouse from campbell's uh-huh. i'm gonna not use them right. and i'm gonna order some modern day laser cut shingles there's a bunch of manufacturers that have them um right. most of the big ones if you just look get on their site they, they have laser cut shingles but i will be ordering laser cut shingles for the next one i do because i'm not putting these on another building um right, right i did two two roof sections for the big building and then the smaller annex building i did a roof section and that those four little pieces of roof took me like it must have taken me three hours dude i know I, i've done them and they suck they do suck. I mean, they look good when they're finished. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, but they look the, awesome. They're just the worst. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they 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 do they look good. And um, they do look good. They were a little wavy. Remember how when you saw them, they were a little wavy. Right. Um. Once I painted them and and I pushed down on them a little bit more, the waviness went away. So. Yeah. yeah. Um. That was fine, but like, man, they just not fun. I know. So. Uh, but you know, once they're on, I use some transfer tape and put them on right, and they were good to go. So, cool. 
the uh the only other thing that was an issue with them was um um they well, because they were curled up when you put them down they don't want to lay straight either so you got to make sure that you're only putting them down at like a quarter inch at a time because they 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 don't even want to lay straight in straight shingle rows oh yeah that i had that problem a little bit too so and you, you have to really be careful and in fact i now you put yours down with transfer tape transfer tape i put mine down with uh with glue i was trying to remember you asked me that question yeah and i i i had put mine down with just standard glue and uh that's that's you know even that's tough enough but at least it allows you to work a little bit at a time you know not that the transfer tape doesn't um, it actually, you could probably, I guess, work more. With you know what sucked tape. about the transfer tape? So on the second one, I did not make this mistake, but on the first one, uh, yeah. when I'm putting the roof on the transfer tape, I'm sorry, when right. I'm putting the shingles on the t- transfer tape, uh, I, I had it uh, uh, adhered to the cardboard, right? The right. chipboard. And I accidentally made the mistake of peeling off all three strips at once. Oh, uh, not one at a time as I progressed through the rows of shingles, and then that yeah. damn coil of shingles kept flopping over like like sticky tape for a mouse, yeah, and, and catching my shingles. So then it would rip the shingles because it would you know inadvertently cross over onto the the transfer tape. So then here oh, I am, yeah. and then it's sticking to my fingers because I'm trying to get it off the t- transfer tape, and then my fingers get stuck to it, and then I'm ripping shingles, and then I'm oh dude. I cannot tell you, like, I was no, I could not have been happier last Friday night other than getting those damn shingles done. <laughs> like, I, know. I, I know. I felt like Clark Griswold putting shingles on a kit. <laughs> yeah, they're, uh, they could be a, they could be a bugger, man. So, I mean, but anyways, yeah, transfer tape works good. You just got to press it down a couple extra times. Yeah. So now how far along are you with it? I got the roof all done. I got the windows are done. I got to weather some of it. Um, I'm doing a big, huge water tank on top of the roof. That's what I'm working on now. The annex building's done. It just needs the roof glued on. Um, Is that signs or? Signs are, it didn't come with good signs, so I'm going to yeah, make I my own signs. Yeah, I remember the old signs that they made. You have to make your own. Yeah, I'm going to put my own signs on. Yeah. I would keep it Brett's Brewery, though. Oh, oh, yeah, but it's the kit's only spelled with one T. Yeah, you got to put two. So I'm going to Photoshop and make two T's. Yeah, you got to. I mean, it's yours. It's yeah. your name, man. So. Yeah. So I'll put two T's on it, and then uh, that'll be it. It's still going to be Brett's Brewery, though. That's cool. But yeah. That's cool. So that's all I got. I mean, there's some detail parts and stuff I have to do. and uh, No, that was very interesting to hear all that, yeah. you know? So what about you? How's your... Uh, well... You got some interesting I, things going on. I'm on a tank. On. Right now I'm on a tank. I mean, I got a lot of stuff building up right now because I, I got the tank. I got stuff I ordered. It's all starting to stack on me. You know, we, you know, but my focus right now is this tank. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that because we all I've told you guys so far is, hey, I'm building a tank in 135th scale. Okay? But um, it, you know, there's a little more to it. And that's one of the reasons why – one of the directions that we want to go – with this is doing all different types. You know, we want to do our structure modeling and things like that. That's our key focus, as always has been. However, we like that distraction, and we want to talk about other modeling as well because there is a lot of other cool modeling out there to do. And let's face it, that's what we are. We're modelers. And uh, and I had this I, – I wouldn't even have been remotely interested in doing this tank had I not seen it on Fos, uh, Foscale Models. Um, website mm-hmm. with the 135th diorama series that they have and um, their diorama bases that you can get. I think uh, I'm trying to think of the name of that. Um, well, I have it right here. I have the box here. But um, hold on. I got to turn around. I got stuff laying all over the place here because I had a plumbing disaster this week. Um, so I got stuff laying all over the place because. We had to do some repair work at the house this week. Um, it is called Diorama Blitz. And and this is what got my – it caught my – what would be the word? Um, Your attention. Yeah, it caught my, got my attention, but it gave me the itch to want to try and build one. Okay? Because 
you know, Doug Fiscali built his for the for the you know to promote his product. Yeah, you know, take pictures and everything else, and then he made these really cool diorama um, kits that are. Um, it's a base with a building. Okay, and the base and the main walls of the building of this particular one, the Kino Theater, um, is made of hydrocal, uh, you know, cast and hydrocal plaster. So it's a, you know, it's a, you know, wall casting, a base. We're going to do a um, box opening of this. So I had several of our uh, of our listeners and some of our people on Facebook. Ask me if I would do a opening of this when I'm ready to start doing the building. I'm going to do a box opening of this diorama kit. Nice. Um, uh, the Kino diorama kit with the walls and all the details and the parts and things that are in it. So I've avoided opening it, and uh, um, I want to open it up and show everybody. I did open up. Uh, I did open it, but I didn't really arrange too much. I took two big wall, the one big wall piece out, and the one. Because I wanted to make sure that the plaster wasn't cracked yeah. or anything like that, right? So uh, uh, it came packaged in a bu- it's in it's in the white boxes like we get our our um, uh, the big white boxes like you get with your um, uh, HO scale um, limited edition kits and stuff mm-hmm. like that, you know. The, and and then what it does, it's a little bigger than them actually, but. Then he puts it in a much larger box and puts peanuts on the bottom, peanuts all around it, peanuts on top, and uh, it's it's very 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 well packaged. Nice. Um, so, anyhow, I you know that was what got my attention. I saw his photos and I was like, I want to build one of them. Okay, but I got to get a tank. That means I got to build a tank. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I just kind of wanted to build a theater with the diorama base, but then you got to have a you know World War II tank on it. Yeah. So I ordered, actually, on his picture, he has this Sherman Easy 8 tank. But I never really looked at that. All, I didn't know anything about tanks. So I started looking online as to what would be a good tank to build. But, you know, we talked about this the other week. <coughs> so I looked online to see what would be an easy tank to build, but not so easy that it's a beginner and it's like snap tight, a snap tight model. Right. You know? I wanted a quality model. So I did my research and read and everything else. And I, I got a the Sherman Easy 8 tank by Tamiya. Everybody said that that tank, that I read the articles and the reviews and things like that, said that that tank is a high quality model. It's fun to build, yet challenging enough for even the experts to make a nice model out of it. And I'm like, oh, that's cool because it's going to have the detail and everything I want. So. So I got, I ordered that kit. Now it was before, well before Christmas, and uh, I ordered this thing, and it took a while to come in because they were hard to find. I mm-hmm. mean, models right, models right now are getting tougher to find. Now, like I said, this is one thirty fifth scale, so it's much larger, and I'm not used to modeling much larger because I've, you know, I've always done the small HO scale. Right. So you're going to this bigger scale, and your eyes train differently to it because you're, it's. I haven't built something of the you know the larger scale since I was a, a kid in school when I made like hot rod cars and <laughs> things like that. You know the hot rod uh, you know model kits, the Rebel you know? kits. And, yeah, those Rebel kits and stuff like that. And I built a battleship and stuff like that before, which is actually smaller scale even than HO. But uh, I built them and, I, and they were fun. You know, but you really didn't think much about it. And you know, I built the battleship. Ah, shit, I was a kid and I I didn't even paint it. You know, it was just plastic gray. <laughs> and that's what it was. You know, you if you, yeah, the and, glue, and the seams you, were shiny from where the glue where you used the testers glue. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But to me, it looked like a million dollars. Okay, what you know, through the years now with modeling and everything else, well, my tastes have changed, and I expect I expect better of myself as a modeler. Right. So I'm taking my time with this, and I open this plastic kit up, and I'm like, oh my god, this takes me back. Well, I'll be damned if I'm going to build it like when I was 12. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to build this thing, you know, to to look awesome, you know, because I see all the military modeler stuff. I want to build it to to what I think is going to be awesome, you know. And I know that this kit, when I'm done with it, it's to me it'll look good. But then, you know, if uh, to to the other modelers that have been military modeling, they might be like, uh, okay, 
<laughs> you know. But to yeah. me, it'll be it'll be cool. So um, I got it and I started putting it together. Okay, I'm following the directions, you know, as you would, um, and putting this all together and then building each. I'm painting each part before I put it together. Um, some people paint them when they're all put together. Uh, some of those guys are amazing to watch. They had put just put the whole plastic kit together and then they paint it, and then they paint it and they're doing it on YouTube. And oh, you're my like, gosh. oh my god, it's beautiful! And you're like, how the hell do you do that? You know, they're getting inside the nooks and crannies. I did mine differently. Um, I went out and got to me. I the neat thing about these kits is they provide you with. Um, and I'm sorry, people, if this is not model railroading. No, it's whatever. still modeling. Yeah, it's modeling. And it's cool because there's, I'm learning stuff from it that I'm going to be able to take to my HS scale, okay, or to my modeling techniques, not necessarily to the scale sizes, but I'm going to be able to – I'm learning techniques and stuff that I might be able to apply to things in model real ready mm-hmm. or when I build my structure. Okay. So anyhow, I'm building this tank, and I and I start I start painting the pieces. Um, I, I – I, the uh, the box itself, if you look up, the, not the box so much, but if you look up the, uh, if you look up on their website, on the Tamiya website, the EZ8 tank, this exact kit, on their website, they'll have a, um, and in their directions in the box too it has it, but it has like a, a schematic of all the paints. It lists all the paints as like a chart, and it tells you what paints to, that you that they recommend that you'll need to do this kit as per the directions before you even open a box. So I went and ordered all these Tamiya paints, and the Tamiya paint in the rattle can, it's only a um, 100 liter, so it's like a small itty bitty can, mm-hmm. you know. And um, 100 liter, milliliter. Oh, sorry, 100 milliliters. I was like, holy bad. shit, 100 yeah. liter, it would be a <laughs> lot be of paint. <laughs> yeah, that'd be huge. But uh, it's a big <laughs> can. I, I, I couldn't even lift that can and, put, and tilt it to spray it. You have, it comes you on know? its own hand truck. <laughs> <laughs> like a acetylene tank. Yeah, you buy it and it comes <laughs> with a hand truck. <laughs> but it's got, um, you know, it's, it's, so anyways, these, these paints in these rattle cans um, come out. There's, there's a lesson to be learned here from these cans. Mm-hmm. And I imagine it's the same with these spray cans that are coming out from MIG and other other ma- modeling companies. Because uh, I know some of the modelers in, in model railroading are using some of these spray cans from these other modeling companies. And they're having good luck with them. And, well, I've used this Tamiya can and it goes on like an air – and I, I, I'm not trying said to – it's smooth. Dock airbrush – but flawless, no runs, no drips, nothing. Nice and smooth. Yeah, um, it's not running, it's not dripping, it doesn't, it doesn't build up. You know, you, you hold it off about six, eight inches away and spray, probably more than six, eight. You know, probably eight inches, and then you spray it. And I got a nice, I got a nice smooth finish on it. Uh, like I said, it's it's nice. Um, so I painted a tank with the all drab. Can I only had to buy the all drab can. So, anyways, I'm opening this box up and I'm building this kit. Okay, and it's fun, you know, because it's all new, it's all different. I got the uh, uh, I, you, you need a pair of spruce snippers, you know, and I have a pair. I had a pair of them anyways uh, to cut the pieces off the off the big rack sprues because all your pieces come on them, and uh, then you and just like just like with the uh, Laser cut pieces that we cut out um, of of a sheet of laser cut stuff, right? Mm-hmm. In a kit, you, after you cut out with the wood, you you cut it out. What do you do with it what, as soon as you cut it out? Then the sprue, the leftover. No, when you cut the, your piece that you want out of your sprue from your laser cut wood kit, what do oh, you, you do you with sand that it. piece? That's right. You sand those little nubs off, right? Same deal on this. You sand in the the same. The same damn thing. I'm using a emery board, or you know, on some things a file because the emery board takes a little longer on this harder plastic. But uh, and you get it smooth, and you get it looking just right, and then you put it aside, okay? And then you cut the next pieces off you need. And then you go and you spray paint them, and then you then then you paint some of the individual detail parts and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and it, it's neat, and you're putting it together. And remember, we did a show, and I complained about glue. I complained about I bought a liquid glue from Testers. Remember? Yeah. And it's extra thin liquid glue. It had a little brush that dipped down. And in you the were bottle. like, "Why the hell would anyone buy this?" And, and what I do with it on the show? You threw it away. Why? Because it didn't hold anything, right. right? You know why it didn't hold anything? It's not made for the bottle. <laughs> right? It's not made for that. So I, well, this thing recommended this Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, which is a relatively the same type of bottle. Uh huh. Um, and I bought a bottle of this stuff, and I'm like, oh my god, it's super, super thin, and it dries in a heartbeat. I mean, it dries quick, so you got to hurry up and put it on, or you got to reapply. Okay. Yeah. But the nice thing is, when it dries, it doesn't leave a lot of residue, to, you know, to it. You know. Right. And you know, you don't see a lot of shiny glue residue and everything else. But, um, so what I did was, uh, I had this. Now, um, now you can put it on. You don't need very much, right? No, it's just a, dro- a tiny little drop. And you're like, oh my god, it held the whole tank body together. And I was like, what the hell? It wasn't able to hold. The other stuff I was working on, I would model. <laughs> not that I would use it for wood. I was using it for metal or I was using it for plastics. I used it for plastics on model railroading. Yeah. But it must be a different plastic. Okay. And um, so this 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 plastic here, because I was using it on like windows, plastic, you know, the, the windows and things like that. See yeah. You get it, it, it sucked. So, but I'm using it on this. It's holding the whole tank together, the big giant pieces, huh. like you know the uh, the hall, the bottom hall and the upper hall, and it's holding them. And they're big pieces that had to be held together in you know, and it, like the walls of it and the bottom of it, and uh, it, it the the thin glue I'm putting it on there, and you have to hurry, you know. Yeah. But you got to be you got to be neat about it. But you got to hurry too because if you don't, it's going to dry up and then it won't stick, and then you got to put more in between. <laughs> And, um, anyways, but it was fun and I learned to start using, I, I learned to use it. That was the problem before I didn't take the time cause I was frustrated with it to learn to use it. And here on this model, I'm learning to use this glue in the proper manner. Yeah. I'm not going to throw this bottle out when I'm done cause I see applications for it. I can use it with plastic. I just now know how to use it with plastic. Now so, you've. You've uh you've learned, and that other glue wasn't trash worthy. It just wasn't. Right. We just were doing it wrong. Well, here's the thing: this glue isn't made for anything but plastic on plastic, right? I was not using it for that. I was using it for everything else. Well, I was using it for plastic on on other uh, on other material, right? Okay. So, um, so I got to learn how to do that, which was cool. Um, and now I've found an appreciation for something I could, couldn't stand and threw away. Um, so that was cool. So once I got it all built, uh, the bottom part, the wheels and all that stuff, well, I took the time and I painted it up just like they said. And, I, and the paint, if, you, if I had not put mud on the wheels and the tracks and stuff like that, it would have still looked awesome, okay, before I weathered it. But I took all this time painting it and everything else, and then I started weathering it. And I'm like, why the hell did I even paint that other stuff? Because you can barely see it. Because <laughs> I, I kicked it all in mud. And I put the pictures up on our site and uh, on our Facebook page and that. And uh, you could see the mud caked on the wheels and all that jazz, right? Yeah. Um, but but so you can I, still, I mean, the time that you spent painting it, because I remember you were texting me. You were like, why? I just spent all this time painting it. Now I don't want to ruin what I painted with mud. But you can, but you can still see the work you did prior to right. mudding it up. A little bit of it, not a lot. No, but but it's there. You're glad you did yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can see there's darker browns. It's in just there. like what we talked about before. It's yeah. layers. Yes, exactly. So, and and this is really caked in mud. I mean, I really caked it up, but it looks good because I want it to be like that. I want it to look like it just came out. It, it just entered the city. After being out in the field for a while, you know, riding through the mud, and now it's in the city. Yeah. That's what I want. So um, it turned out good. I put some photos up. I got a lot of comments on it from some guys that have actually built these things, it, which was very encouraging. Some of these guys, a couple guys were military modelers, and they said, you really nailed the wood, mud. And uh, so I felt real good about that. And um, so that's on the lower hall. 
and I really nailed the track work. And the, so the track, it comes with a rubber, rubber. It's like a rubberish track like, that wraps around. Okay. Okay. That is glued together with guess what? What? Plastic cement. Huh. The tester, like the tester's plastic cement. Yeah. Now they have another plastic cement that's, uh, is, is, but you want to use a thicker plastic cement. Then you glue it together with not giant globs and drops. Okay, you don't want it to ever see. But you had to. I was thinking you had to glue the whole damn track together, mm-hmm. you know, into a giant loop. When it's while while you're first you wrap it around, then you put it on your, you wrap it around your 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 wheels and stuff, and your and your um, gears. Well, not gears. I guess they're sprockets and wheels. You wrap it around that and then glue it. Well, no, no, it's not like that. You make the loop first off the tank. Huh. And then you glue it, and I I held it together with some uh, some clamps, some spring clamps, uh, right on it until it dried completely. So I gave it like two hours, so I got a nice solid dryness out of it. Mm-hmm. And even, even though it probably dried long before that. And I did both the tracks. And then, um, and, but I weathered them up first. Okay. But, but this is when I put them, went to put them and install them on to install. Them. You had to slip the tracks over each wheel and you had to stretch it. And you, uh, the whole time you're praying that your, that your, your glue work held, you know, cause you don't want it breaking again. And it's going to look uglier if you have to do it again. Right. So I got that on, but to weather, it was cool. And I used all kinds of things that, you know, I have collected from um, the military modeling companies, like uh, the MIG the MIG washes and things. Like I had some leftover AK crap um, that, I, that I had and, you know, just stuff like that. And I was like, thank God I bought this a long time ago because now I can weather up. So I, I put this, I put the dirt and dust down in between the tracks Okay, so it made it look like mud caked into the tracks a little bit. And then on the edge of the tracks, I mean, I put all kinds of washes and things, dark washes and things like that on. Yeah. It was so fun. And I and I didn't just go and do it. I went online and I looked on YouTube and I watched about a dozen videos of people doing tracks and each one did them a little different, you know? So you're almost getting a little bit of a course, like you're you're oh, yeah. giving yourself a little bit of a education on it. A- absolutely. And and so then the the tops of the tracks where the where the metal would show when it goes over a road or whatever and you know there's no long the mud starts falling off mm-hmm. where where the, the the tops of the tracks they hit the surfaces I took some paint I took so actually I took because I couldn't find any of the silver paint I'm sorry uh yeah I couldn't find any of the silver paint that I needed that they recommended for that. It was one of those, I can't remember what the exact color of it was, Yeah. but they didn't have any of it at any modeling store, even the ones online. So I'm like, they were all backward from wherever Tamiya gets them from, you know, wherever <laughs> they get them from to me. Right. So I'm okay. So I, I use craft smart craft paint tin. It's a uh, matte tin, uh, metallic. And, uh, I use that and I just, put a little bit on the tip and and uh kind of almost dry brushed it across each one of those little rises and you'll see it on the on the photos and it makes it look like the metal's starting to show through on the top uh the shiny metal you know uh because they're going on a hard surface now yeah. and it, it's the dirt and dust and through. mud's wearing it's off. Falling off yeah exactly it looked good it turned out real good i love the effect that it got um it was almost uh, i was i was thrilled with it Okay, um, so I did that whole section. Now I'm working on the upper hall, and there's lots of little detail parts and stuff, and they're fun to glue on. But the key is you, there's like axes and things like that get attached to the pa- to the tank. Yeah, I have to be careful when I'm reading the directions that I can't put them things on yet because I got to do like I got to do the weathering of the top part, like uh, the washes, the dark washes that bring the details out on the paint, like, uh, on, on some of the rivets and things like that. And the edges, um, they have these little details that need to be done in like a dark wash. So right now I'm using actual, um, this wash here. It's a dark wash called, 
uh, enamel dark wash for NATO camo, camo vehicles. Um, I bought it for another purpose in my railroading. Uh, that was made by that one's AK, but um, and I and I tried using that and that works good. And then I found another wash that gives it a second layer, and that's the MIG enamel dark wash. And uh, what it does is it makes it just gives everything like a little shadow, okay. And you put it on, and then after it's on and it dries a little bit, then you take your um, any any over kill that you had on it yeah you take your uh your mineral spirits and you just kind of with a tiny brush just kind of move remove them it's so fun and it's very tedious but um i'm about done with that part and now i'm gonna now i'm about ready to do uh some washes on the on the green upper hall okay on the big open areas Mm -hmm. and and i don't have like i have the axes and things like that still not put together because they, they get different color paints and I don't want them to get these washes. They're going to get attached to one after I do the washes. Um, I might put a little dust or something on them, but they're recommending that, that a couple of these real good modelers I was watching did some washes for like in browns and stuff on them to give them like a, uh, like a faded look. Now uh-huh. I'm not talking about like streaks. Okay. Cause I'm going to do that next. It's going to get the streaks next, and then it's going to get some of these washes, or uh, maybe the other way around, the washes first. The washes like browns and yellows and things, but but it'll it, it's mainly where the where the paint is fading, okay, in spots, not everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then and then you put on some chipping, and then we're not doing the chipping that way. I'm doing chipping by brush, so it's not it's not chipping paint away. I'm not doing a chipping method that like we're all familiar with, with chipping fluid or hairspray that some people use. Um, I, what I'm doing is chipping by painting. So I'm paint. I'm putting on wa- uh, paint on little edges and things like that with a very very fine triple zero brush, mm-hmm. and then you put on a light coat, uh, like a like a a tan, a very light tan, like almost like sand. And then, and it's, it's, you know, it's just little dots. And then you sprinkle spray, uh, you know, with like the toothpick method where you get some speckling, um, and not too much, just a tiny bit. And then you take, you take the, um, a dark wash and you put just a little bit of that on on the inside edge of those, of those white spots. Uh, so you'll need the visor for it. And then on the third layer will be your rust like a like a some kind of a rust deposit and you use that rust deposit in the center of it and it get, it makes it look like it's it just makes it look like it's a rusty dot you know now on this i don't want to put too much rust on okay so i'm only going to do little bits of it in certain places the reason that is is because this tank came out in 1942 right uh 1942 and 43 and the war was over in 45 so i'm thinking you know how rusty do you think these things got plus these guys, well, yeah, they took care to, of it. They had to take care of the tank. If you don't have your tank and it's not running right, okay, or if it's well, then you're shit out of luck. You might die. Yeah, <laughs> you know? this was their. This was not only was this a weapon for them. Right. This was also their safety at the same time. Right. Right. And um, you know, it's uh, I I I work in a field of you're in the yeah that, that it, in the military with military. And, um, well, you're not in the military. You know what I meant. No, I'm not in the military, but I mean, I'm saying I work in the field of the military, and I know the, how equipment must be taken care of because it is how you survive. So um, it is. It's safety. Definitely, it's safety and uh, right. Safety and it's protection and a weapon at the same time. So I don't want to over rust it because I looked at photos of old World War II v- uh, tanks, and uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm seeing, I'm just seeing very much rust on these tanks. No, and these were photos during the war. Well, and even yeah. when you watch a movie, uh, you know, pick a movie, pick a war movie, modern war movie. Oh, uh, so Fury. Right, but even in Fury, I mean, if there's a, if, if if it's a scene where there's been a lot of rain and it's muddy and they're on campaign, yeah, yeah there's mud on the tracks, right. but you don't usually, you know. Even in those war Somebody's movies, somebody's washing that shit off when they get when they get when they have some break time. I mean, in the middle of you know? of a battle Combat. situation, yeah. there's gonna be there's gonna be mud and yeah. stuff slung up all over the tank. Yeah. But at the same, right. you know, it's not like they drove around all of Europe all 
the whole world war it, with mud on their tank. No. I mean, they probably had it on quite a bit, but you guarantee you when you, when you went into rest and you weren't in combat situations and uh, you were... They're hosing that you know, thing off. Yeah, that thing's getting cleaned up so a little bit, you know? Because you, you don't want there to be problems when you're out in the field. So, anyways, I'm not going to over-rust it. I am going to put some little spots and maybe a couple corners and things. Yeah. Um, and then um, I will put the washes on, like, uh, the fade, because paint fades. And um, I will put some, uh, like, water streaks, you know, like uh, where, where you get acid rainwater streaks, that kind of thing. Yeah. But outside of that, you know, that's where I'm at right now on it. I can't wait to get these other parts done. But one of the cool things I was reading with the, or watching is – I've used all these other, I have all these AK products or, or MIG ammo products, uh, ammo by MIG products, I mean. Um, and I got a bunch of them, and I'm really loving them. I'm really loving the ammo stuff right now. But now these guys are telling me in this that I need that to do some of these washes. That I get these watercolors. <laughs> well, I don't have watercolors. I have oils. I have acrylics. I have enamels. Okay? I don't have watercolors. So I went out to Michael's this weekend. I bought a, uh, uh, it's a, uh, the, the guy, uh, it's kind of like what the guy uses on the videos. And it is a um, pan, it's, they're called uh, watercolor pan, uh, pan watercolors. And they have the little uh, dots, I guess, they're little pan, they're little cups. Yeah. And they're all in one tray and they don't move and it has all the different colors on it. It must have like 36 or 48 colors, 48 colors it is, I guess. And um, so I had that. Uh, it's got a bunch of browns and, and yellows and things on it that I'm going to mix together, and I'm going to get some washes out of it, and um, I'm going to try his method on it. We'll go see how it works. And, you know, here's the other thing. I found, because I did the first dark wash. Remember we were talking about the dark washes on that? Uh-huh. Uh, that draws the highlights out, like the rivets and things like that. And I kind of went a little heavy with it, and I didn't like it, right? So guess what I did? What? just like we talk about in model rivering you know it's not ruined you know so i took the whole thing put it on a put it on a on my board my painting board took it outside and i covered the damn thing and all will grab again start over start all over so, yep yep uh, i lightly sprayed it i didn't over spray it i just lightly sprayed it because i don't want to lose any detail and um, it, ju it just turned out good. I can't get over the spray paints, dude. And then I can't get over another thing that I learned to use. What? These Tamiya acrylic paints. And I talked about them last week a little bit with uh, Menard on the show. And they're just little tiny bottles. They're not overly expensive. They You get less paint than what you get in your craft paint. Mm -hmm. But, you know, because you know, we're talking a 10 milliliter. And it's... Not very much paint in there. Uh, well, there's, there is paint. It's going to take a long time to use it because you only need one coat. It doesn't. That's it. If it's primered, you need one little coat. You don't need to keep going over, even with the lighter colors. Like if you, you know, sometimes we use yellows or whites. Yeah. You kind of on the craft paints. You kind of got to go back for a second kinda, or so coat. Yeah, because they they, they kind of the stuff underneath shows through. Yeah. Not on this. Oh one coat. Gosh, I, that's it. And, it, and you know what? And it's not thick. It takes no, it's not as thick as your craft paint. Huh. And it takes, it takes, it goes on, what would be the word to use for that? Um, Smooth? I, 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 it's not, so it covers, it covers extremely, almost perfect. It's, it's, and they're, they're like two fifty three dollars a bottle. Huh. You know? But so I don't find that overly expensive compared to some of the other stuff in this hobby. So I'm going to keep some of these for mono. I want to see how they do. Now, I won't paint a building, wood, the wood on a building with it, right, on clapboard or anything like that. But I am going to try it on some of the um, detail parts and things like that because I think there's going to be an application for this stuff. Uh, so I'm finding that I'm learning, I'm learning some new things. I'm learning how they do things just a little differently. Um, but in its bigger scale, and I probably won't do another bigger scale one for quite some time. But I am excited what, to get this tank done because now I had that diorama that I that I got came from um, Foscio Models that I was telling you all about the base and everything. I'm gonna do a on Facebook Live. I will do a box opening for all of you on that. 
when when the time comes and I'm ready to start it. Okay, as soon as I finish this tank. Okay, um, and then I will build the diorama base and the building itself. But um, on that, I checked out the hydrocal details, Brett. Yeah. Insane. I I've not seen castings. I've seen castings from some other companies in our HO scale that had detail to them. Uh-huh. Not like this, man. Oh my God! When you next time you come over here, I open that box, you guys. Well, I'm gonna show it on the video too. But it's it's sick. It's sick. It, 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 it it's perfect. The sidewalks, the cobblestone streets, the the walls with the bricks and the, where the where the bricks and the um, stucco separate. You know, so it's it's so detailed. I was remarkably impressed. Huh. With with that. So I can't wait to uh, I can't wait to get to work on that and paint that because now I'll be not building a tank, but I'll be building a building, but in a larger scale, and it's going to be really something fun to work with all. Of. I was surprised by the amount of listeners that we had that are actually interested in seeing what they're all about because I had quite a few comments and and private messages as well saying, "Hey, you got to open, you got to you got to do that." And opened a box opening for us. And I'm not cutting you. I like there were like eight to ten people that did that. And then I had some private messages on. Well, they were private messages, and uh, I had some people comment on our posts as well. So hmm. I'm I, I'm I'm shocked because a lot of these guys that I know are model railroaders. So they're excited about that, seeing what it's about. So that's cool. I mean, uh, that's what this is about. We want to open everybody's eyes to bigger modeling or different modeling or modeling like you're doing older kits and stuff to make ourselves a better modeler overall. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. it. That's where I'm at right now. I think, you know, it, and Jason Jensen's doing a lot of this with his own crazy yes. sci-fi builds. Oh, He's doing another one. Too. Um, yeah. But I think doing older kits or doing different scales or doing, uh, I'm doing that. I did that one from Jake Johnson, the the ga- last chance gas station. Yep, yep. Now it is my scale, but it's not necessarily like. It's not a fit to our town. It's not our style, but I am. Right. I did decide I'm doing it in a diorama. I have the building done, um, right? But I'm gonna do a diorama for it now, and I'm just gonna put it on my desk at work. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing with this thing. Um, it's you know, gonna be at it work. Goes on my desk at work. It's a topic piece for people who they come up to your desk. They see it. Like, oh, that's cool. Well, and yeah, and my friends, my friends and stuff at work know I do this, so I want to like leave something at my desk. Yeah. So they can kind of like you know come see by and go, it. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, so. they, I mean, they already know that. <laughs> I'm kidding, but no, um, but it, but it is. It's and it, it's something I can take you know then to work. Oh yeah. And you know I have a piece of what I do at work at my desk. Sure. All right. Well, hey, let's do um, let's do our fun stuff, and then right, I. What's our fun stuff? Uh, well, let's do some. What are you listening to at your workbench? Ooh, I don't. What did I listen to this week? I have to pull it up and see it here. Um. Hmm. No, that don't count because you sent me that. That's the last thing I listened to. Uh, I listened to. Clutch. Oh, that's a good classic. Old mess of clutch. The old school clutch. Yeah. So I love the old school clutch. It used to be back in the uh, like the early early nineties and stuff or mid nineties. I was listening to that when I was playing a lot of hockey, and uh, in you know, and I and I, I yeah, I get, you were young. You were probably four or five years old, and I used to listen to Clutch. And uh, it was just one of those things that I, I listened to it. And it it put me in the mood to go play hockey. You know, it wasn't hockey pump up music because it's not like that. No. Okay. It's hockey. It's kind of like more dr- mellow. I don't know. It's it, you got to check it out. Clutch. Do look at the older stuff first. You know, tra- transitional speedway. And uh, that kind of thing. Uh, uh, the they just came out with a new album. Clutch. Yeah, I know. You know, it was okay. It's okay. It's good. It's not quite the same. It doesn't have some of the same. 
They get a little silly in their lyrics and things and the old stuff. What's that one song They're I like? Creative. From them? And, you know, oh, electric, like, electric Worry is a good one. Yeah, I have to check that one out. But I, I tried listening to some of their newer stuff, and then and, and I think a lot of that's just familiarity. I'm well, used yeah, to you're the used old to the old stuff, clutch, and I like the I know the words and the lyrics to them. You know, like I can sit here at the workbench, listen to it, and I can you know sing along to it. You know, I, I know I, I don't sing out real loud, and I don't want you know I, I wouldn't ever, even even in front of your mom, I wouldn't embarrass myself like that. But you know, you have it. You're just kind of mumbling it to yourself while you're working. You know, I I, I miss that. You know, I miss the old clutch. So I was into the clutch this week. You know. There's but, nothing uh, wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, that's it. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Nope, that's pretty much all I was listening to this week. Okay, well, but. I was listening to... my. I had this song on repeat, like, almost all week so far. It's yeah. a ACDC song. Which one? Called Demon Fire. Oh, yeah? Is it's it all, new? It's newer, yeah. Oh, it's okay. off their album. Uh, it came out in 2020 off their Power Up album that just came out in oh. the end of 2020. Oh, huh, I'll have to check that one out. Uh, Demon Fire. I, I don't know what it is about that song, man. It's just like... <laughs> yeah? It's good. It's got like... I, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just good. Yeah, so, I, and I get that. I mean... It's not, uh, it's not like the old... ACDC. I mean, it still has the old ACDC that you'd expect, like the Angus Young, where he's like, oh, yeah, 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 you know, he does like the, <laughs> he still does that, but like, yeah, but it's got like this section of the song where he, there's a deeper voice that he does too, and it's like that song, man, Demon Fire by ACDC. It is like their oh, yeah. new album. It's ACDC. I mean, they've been the same band for what fifty years now, forty years, right, right. It's the same band, but that new song, man, that just it makes you like. That is a song you listen to when we were playing hockey that would have been like, you put it on in the locker room right before you go out. Yeah. It's that oh, kind yeah, of song. Yeah. But, uh, man, it was I, good. I love, I love old, some old ACDC. Well, this is yeah. new ACDC. New I old like, ACDC. Eh, I guess you're right. I, I mean, I, I guess I should not think it's just, again, familiarity. You know, I like the old Thunder Trust me. Best it won't. Thunder Yo, the best hockey warm up song. Do you want to hear a. a Thing I never heard of this before. So at my, at my work, and we're going to sidetrack for just a second, and then we're going to get into listener questions. Okay. At my work, we you were. Had any. We I put it up. Okay. At my work, we had uh, um, every day every day of the week, one of one of my four employees and I get to pick the song. I mean the the music of the day. Yeah, so yeah. Mondays are my day. Right. And um. Um, I put AC, I put, I put like a cla- like a hard rock hits station on the one day, and um, we, they were playing ACDC Thunderstruck on the radio on the, the, the playlist I was playing, and Mike the guys like the kids I got working for me are all like twenty four and younger, young younger, twenty five, twenty six, twenty three, um, and the one kid goes, hey, have you ever heard? Of the drinking game to this song, Thunderstruck. Yeah. And I was like, what? No. No, no. I've never, like, I was simple when I was younger. I played beer pong and yeah. flip cup. That was it. <laughs> and then uh, he's like, oh, yeah, it's Thunderstruck. So you get, like, a whole bunch of people. If you have a big party, you get a group of people. You circle up, and then you listen to Thunderstruck, and everyone has a couple beers in their hand, and... Every time he says thunder, it switches the person, and you have to drink until he says thunder again. Which uh. it, I was thinking it would be okay if you were on the part where it's like thunder, da, da, yeah. da, thunder. But then, like, there's like a a minute and a half section where he's not saying thunder at all. That would, that would suck to me. And the kid I was work, the kid who works for me, he's like, "Yeah, man." He's like, "You just don't want to get that part where he goes back into the verse where it's not. You don't say thunder for like a minute and twenty seconds." I'm like, "I didn't. I never thought about that." Like, it, then it's I the thought best warm up song. And then I listened back I to that song, that and I'm think. Then I'm listening back to that song, and I'm thinking, "What does a kid think of a drinking game with that though? Like, what the hell makes you think of that game?" But whatever. Yeah. I mean, hey, whatever. Um. Oh, you know my favorite my, now my favorite ACDC song overall is a whole lot of Rosie. 
Oh, that one's good. You know what mine that is? is? Hang on, let me look ever. back through here. I have it saved. Um, hang on, I'm looking for my favorite. I have it saved on my one playlist for my running playlist. Oh, Girls Got Rhythm. How do you run, how do you run the ACD? Girls Got Rhythm. That was a good one. Girls Got Rhythm. Yeah, that was a good one. I like they that so one. Many, they so many, and they sound a lot alike, but... But you know you you, you can't get sick. Yo, live wire. Yeah, that's a good one. Can. Yo yo yeah, no no. Yeah, my favorite ACDC one. song of all that's time. You ready? What it is? This is my ready. This what? is my favorite song of all. Big balls. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I was never a big fan of that one. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I I know. I'm kidding. Okay. But he's got the biggest <laughs> balls of them all. <laughs> <laughs> you got yeah. Anyways, all right. So anyways, what's our listener questions? Listener questions. First listener questions of twenty twenty one. First one's from Jake Johnson. Other than three D printing, what are some new modeling skills you would like to explore? Oh, and can you add three D printing to that answer while you discuss? Three D printing is my one. Um, I I'll lead this off. Uh, quick answer to this question, Jake. I got some different types of resin, and I was actually printing. I put a sneak preview of it up on the overtime at the bench um listener group page um the i got clear resin and i'm printing um i'm printing light poles what what hello yo Uh uh-oh we lost my dad hang on I'm going to call him back real quick. Hang on. This is a technical difficulty. Hang tight. He'll be right back in a second. Don't mind the music. Just wait. Yeah. Hey, and we're back. Are you there? Can, Hello? Hey, can you hear me? I can now, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I'll just leave that part of the blooper. I could hear you before. You just couldn't hear me for well, whatever it, it said poor internet connection, and then it disconnected. Uh, so my my Mennonite neighbors must be stealing all the internet. Anyways, yeah. um, so what did I leave off? Oh, so I'm printing. Uh, I'm 3D printing lamp posts for my um, mm-hmm. for my uh, our city that we have because I figure we have a lot of streets and side. We're gonna have tons of sidewalks and streets, but I don't want to have to buy all those lamp those. No offense to Titchy. But that's a lot of money in lamps and lamp posts. Fire hydrants, man. You gotta get fire hydrants. Well, I mean, I can print that stuff too. But what I was getting at is one of my new things is I got clear resin. Yeah. Um, and I was telling my dad about it earlier. Uh, I'm printing the globes. I, well, I was gonna print street lamps, and then I thought, well, shoot, like I don't want to print them all in one file because um, then I'm gonna have to paint the street lamp globes mm-hmm. like white, and that's just gonna look stupid. Yeah, so cool. I got. Clear resin. I bought a jar, a jug of clear resin, and um, I'm. Pr- yeah, we were talking about that a little bit yesterday. With, uh, last week with Bernard. I know, but yeah. now I now I got it in the mail and I printed right. it. And holy cow! This I printed it with such a thin layer. It took forever because I made the layers thin. Mm-hmm. But holy cow! They printed like it looks like glass. It is That's so insane. the the print. I I made sure, and it took eight hours to print these. Um, they're tiny. But I printed 40 of them at a time, so I could do a big batch at once. Was there any wastage, or do you have any that didn't turn out well? Or No, I got 40, I printed 40, and they all, all 40 were perfect. Oh, that's great. And I printed 40 lamp posts, and all 40, well, 39 were perfect. I broke the first one trying to take it off. <laughs> so I got <laughs> I got 39 lamp posts, but it's not a big deal. Um, right. Now, how long did the lamp posts take? The lamp posts took two and a half hours. Okay. Now, what about the lids? Is it lids for the That was on the same file. So I printed okay, the lamp okay. posts and the lids on, in one print because I can just primer yeah. those black or just spray, yeah, yeah. spray paint them black. Sure. Um, and then the I, I, I sliced the 3D file into three sections. So it's the top, the globe, and the post. Um, gotcha. And the first set I did was way too big. Yeah. They were almost like um, – they were big. They were double the size they should have been. So um, – I scaled them down. I measured a titchy window. I mean, I, I measured a titchy lamp po- a lamp post yeah, with the whole yeah. assembly, and then I um, scaled it down to that size. Right, right. And it turned out pretty good. Uh, I can't wait to see them. So, We're gonna need a lot of that stuff. Yeah. 
So I um, I figured, you know, a set of six or ten titchy lampposts was probably probably going to be, I don't know, what, three or four bucks? Probably, yeah. But we're going to need enough to cover a city. Right. Uh, and I found a couple different types of lampposts because yep. you don't want them all the same for your whole city. No, no, no. Um, but I can print, you know, 60 or 80 of them for a dollar or two in resin costs. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, um, and, and if we run out, we need more, boom. We'll I can load the file up and print it more. Uh, yeah. so, so the, the, the main thing I wanted to get at was the clear resin came out looking perfect, perfect. Almost like, I can't wait to see it. It didn't look like it was printed in layers. It looked like it was just poured perfectly into that shape. Oh my gosh. Like it was poured into a mold versus printed layer by layer. Oh, that's awesome. That's so that's my thing. I want to get better at 3D printing, and I think the one thing I want to try to do is, um, you know, you can get online and order uh, um, parts for rolling stock if you're going to custom yeah. make rolling stock. Yeah. I I found a Facebook group that that has 3D printed railroad, or someone invited me to it, actually. I think it might have been Jake Johnson. Okay. It was either Jake or Daniel Banks. But um, one of those guys invited me to a... Um, 3D printing for model railroading group and there's some STL files in there and I found on Reddit a, a group that has some STL files which is the 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 3D object file um, right. for f- rolling stock. Yeah. And you can 3D print I can 3D print rolling stock for us and cool. uh, custom paint it, get it all, you know, the way we want it and I think it'd be it'd be more special I think if we made our own rolling stock. Just to learn it, even. You know? Even if it's one or two cars, it'd just be cool yeah. to have one or two. Um, now you still have to buy the, uh, like the 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 what do you call them? The wheels and stuff yeah. and couplers, but right, but right. still, we could do everything else. Assemble it and just buy the KD couplers and then attach it to the uh, hook it up on our train set. But um, anyways, that's my thing. Three uh, D printing is what I want to do. The other thing I want to do after watching you do a different scale. I don't want to do a military model, but I think I Why want... Not? Just do a military model. Please. Well, no, I do want to do something different. Oh, okay. I did that pickup truck, which I do have finished. I know a couple people have asked me the status of that pickup truck. I, will I may po- do a plane. But I, will pick, I will post a photo of that pickup truck finished. I know some people ask how that ever turned out. I have it. Yeah. I will post a finished picture. But the, um, the thing I think I want to try next is not a model, per se, like you did. Yeah. I want to do... Kind of an inspiration of what Jake Johnson did. I mean, I'm sorry, um, Jason Jensen did. It's too many double J names. Um, but uh, <laughs> no offense. But uh, the uh, the thing I want to try is, um, and I'm not like into this kind of stuff, like the superheroes or anything like that, or or mythological stuff. But I have a really strong admiration for people that paint those um, and do those. Uh, um, the figurines. Yeah. You know, yeah. like they print like a, Oh my God. They print something are, from, they print something yeah. like some mythological creature and they paint and yeah. weather it and it just looks insane. Uh, they, go do yourself a favor. Go well, to Kathy Malott's Facebook page. Oh, I saw it. It was on her Instagram. Her Mandalorian. It was on her Instagram too. Oh my God. Man. Yeah, on her Instagram. Yeah, that's what I meant. So on her Instagram. I um the Mandalorian she did and it's sick. I, and the and the skulls on the Oh my god. So that's yeah. what I want to try. Uh yeah. maybe not the Mandalorian, but I want to yeah. do like I want to do something like that where yeah. it's not a I mean it's still a model, but yeah. but I want to do like I want to do like uh some kind of a a a, a figurine or a some kind of character from a movie yeah. or whatever it is. I don't know. Maybe I'll pick. There's some. There's some 3D print sites that have like um, the war game. I mean the Warhammer stuff and things like mm-hmm. that. Um, I don't. I'm not too into that. But I, there's a lot of free resources to print um, replica. Or not even free. There's some places that these guys do incredible designs and they sell them for a dollar or two or five, whatever. You almost like uh, a donation to them, or you know, yeah. you get the file for ten bucks. Yeah. Well, I I would gladly give te- someone a couple bucks, could throw a couple bones their way, and then just download a really badass 3D file, and then paint it up. That's what I want to do. Yeah. So I want to mix 3D printing and do some kind of cool ass, like mythological figure, and just paint it up real nice. Do it cool. Just leave it at my workbench. Just something cool to have sitting around. Great. 
So that's that's what I want to do. Well, I want to start exploring plastic building models uh, a little bit. I talked about it the other week. Uh, I want to try. I, I told you we have a list of these models I'm going to look into, and that's the uh, these uh, you know some of the buildings that you know, brick buildings and things that we can use in our city outside of the wood buildings that we have all over the place. Yeah, we need more brick, and we talked about that, and that's that's kind of something I really want to get into, and I haven't done a lot of it in a long time. And I want to kind of get back into that. It's uh, I think that was part of Jake's question, right? Yep. And uh, so I, I'm really excited about doing some of that and uh, getting some of those models and making it happen. And uh, so I, and I listed a bunch of them uh, the, a couple weeks ago. And By the way, I'm guys, sure. check out Jake's new podcast. Yes. While you're at oh, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's really cool. Nice job. Sounds Well, awesome. I shouldn't say Jake. Jake and Dave. I Dave, did message Dave, Dave Meek. I messaged um it's Crescent Creek Models, they have their own podcast yeah. now. But I um I messaged Jake about it and he had a he he, he replied back, "Hey, thanks for the good comments cuz I listened to it the other week when they put it out or last week when they put it out, but he said, "Hey, he's like uh, I didn't do any. I just showed up to talk." He's like, "Dave did all the hard work." So, give Dave the credit. Yeah. But man, you guys are I can't wait to see what you guys do. Um Jake messaged me a little bit about what he's got what they've got planned uh for the show. And uh, I won't give anything away if you haven't listened to it yet, but um, um, he's got some cool guests lined up. I don't know the guests, but he told me what they're looking for for their theme for their show, and yeah. it's going to be really cool. So if you guys aren't following it already, go over and check out their podcast. Give it a follow. It's on Crescent Creek Models. It's on their Facebook page. Um, those guys are awesome, and I wish them the best of luck in their podcasting ventures. Absolutely. I think that's so cool. Now we'll have... Them on the west and us on the east, and that's what we yeah. started out. Well, and they got a, and they've got a, east, east, west. and they've got a whole separate like man. They got a whole separate kind of idea they got going on, and uh-huh. and, well, and they can because they do what they do. But uh-huh. um, man, I'm excited to hear what they've got coming up. I don't know who they are or who, what they who they have planned coming on, but just from what Jake um, briefly told me, very briefly told me, um, they got a really cool idea for their show. That's great. So. Um, yeah. Anyways, hey, let's move on to the next question. Yes, absolutely. We haven't done these in like a month. I'm happy. I know. I know. Get on with it. Um, Greg Cassidy, um, which do you have more passion for these days, building kits or the layout? I think it's both. Um, and I'll yeah. speak for you maybe. I'm, I'm not trying to speak for you, but we I, went, I we so. had a lot of kits. We were building a lot of kits, building a lot of kits, building a lot of kits, and now it's like, okay, well, now we got to – now we got to put the – you know, rubber – we got to – go where the rubber meets the road and we got to put our money where our mouth is and actually put these on the layout and build a scene and do this. The other day, my dad was here for Christmas. He came over a belated Christmas um, just because of the circumstances. And he came down here and I had the COVID. there you go. My dad got COVID anyways, yeah. <laughs> but cats out, the cats out of the bag. I'm mo- good. I'm moving good. on. But um, a hundred percent. Yeah, he got it, but mom didn't. So hey, whatever. But um, <laughs> but you know, I think it was a great Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> on Christmas Day, my dad found out he had COVID. But anyways, that's a positive on that day. <laughs> so uh, um, I mean, we're not making light of the situation, but no, no. but because I did have a. I did have a couple bad days. But of all yeah. the days to get told you have it, you don't want it to be Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. But anyways, um, you know the. I have a I have a lot of that I've been doing, and since my dad was actually here then that day on the postponed Christmas Day last weekend, <laughs> um, almost a half a month later, he uh, I, I I I've done a little bit down here on the layout. I basically I mainly just been working on the Campbell's kit, but I did do uh, uh, I ripped that whole dirt section out where that uh, where like the Roland's yeah. welding was and a couple things like that. I made it all right. concrete. I'm I'm starting to now paint. Since you've been here, Dad, I painted some of the upper section. I didn't send you any pictures because it's nothing much. Yeah, I'm getting rid of as much green foam as I can. If you guys have seen yeah. pictures no, of our, I had to reshape some of that, but yeah, we, but can, always we can always repaint, repaint that. Yeah. And um, I was down here talking to him that Saturday, and I said, "Hey, the next step for me is to get rid of as much green foam as possible." So it if you guys have seen when you're pictures, trying to put your city together and get a, a right. Visual, well, and if you've seen you know? pictures of our layout. There's a lot of green foam and purple foam exposed. Yeah. So I'm right now. My main goal is to shape it and cover it in gray paint. And the reason we're going with gray paint and not earth tone paint 
is because the majority of our city is going to be, I mean, the majority of our layout is going to be city. We want it to be a concrete jungle. Yeah. Um, and I figured the base coat of concrete shades and differing differing shades of concrete, because I don't want it to all look like the same concrete right, either, right. Absolutely. but differing shades of concrete all over layout, um, where we do want dirt, we can always apply that on top. Yeah. Or where we want foliage, we can put a layer of brown then on top of that and right. and mix in you know grass patches and things right. like that. But I'm going to cover the thing in gray concrete colors, and then from there we'll backstep and do scenery, grass, dirt, trees, etc. Yeah. Later. But man, this thing I want it to be a concrete. We want I want it to be, and I think my dad does. I want it to be a concrete jungle the whole way, right? Pretty much right. the whole way. Yep. So. um uh, that, that, that that's was our idea. The goal here for the next two or three weeks is going to be shape and then cover it in gray. That's and my. There'll be dirt and earth and things. And yeah, there's some, there's some hillsides. Corners, there's some Even weird in town. You know, behind buildings or yeah. You know, whatever. I mean, don't get me wrong. But, we need to add some weeds and dirt and vines and stuff and trees. Absolutely. But and there's some cool hillsides we have that we need and to trees, cover. We gotta get cracking on trees. Yeah, we gotta cover some hillsides and stuff. Yeah. But for the most part, but we like doing both. I know, but but the majority of it is going to be a concrete jungle. Well, and no, even no, no. But the question was, what do you like doing? Oh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we we got way off track. Uh, Sorry, I love building buildings. I'll never stop. Yeah, we did. We got off way off track. But we, oh, I, I love building the buildings. I'll never ever stop loving building my buildings. Okay, I'm gonna. I got stacks of them here. I'm gonna get to work on. But I don't know. I'll, I'll probably be dead before I get them all done. But it's um. I hate that. That's probably not the nicest thing to say. Yeah, but, I don't want to uh, talk about that. No, but I'm saying, no, I'm saying, like way down the road. Like, <laughs> no, I know like, what you decades. mean. Yeah, you know, it's gonna take me decades. Is what I'm trying to say. Well, so, um, but then the, you know, it's the the uh, well, and we've actually transitioned. But I you, love the scenery. I love doing what you were just saying. We've transitioned. I, mean, I love that. We've transitioned you perfectly. Now, I mean, okay. So this is what happened over December, and it kind of was a shitty month. Um, my dad came down here beginning of December. We cleaned the whole the whole layout room clean. Oh yeah. Oh, Bone yeah. dry. I mean it's it's nice now. I mean it was nice before, but now it's yeah. nice. Really nice. Yeah. No clutter. No yeah. clutter. We got rid of there's some little tiny working piles, but they're working piles. Everyone's yeah. got yeah. working piles. Yeah. We built you a workbench down there at the other end, so you and I have, our, have own our own workbench. Work and then a week later you got sick. So yeah, <laughs> so I then know. for two weeks you couldn't even come down here and work at your brand new workbench. <laughs> um, well, actually, a little longer than that because we had the holidays built in. Uh, right? It was a messy month. Yeah. It was a messy month. But yeah. but um, my it's dad's got a month. So we've actually there. set we've set ourselves up now to do more on the layout and less of yep. and less buildings. I mean, we're still going to do buildings, but we we're transitioning more to doing more layout work. We just right. had a bad December. It happens. Yeah. That's we're life. Gonna, we're going to put an extra shop blade in there. I, and, yeah, I actually uh, went to Lowe's and uh, was looking for an LED. Um, yeah. strip light from over top of yours, I'll daisy chain it into the existing um, lights we Sweet. have. Well, I wanted to fill out the bottom part of that harbor, though, too. So, not just our workbench. I want to... Well, there's it. already a well, light, there's already a light on that. top of the harbor. Yeah, that's true. And it'll throw light towards that other edge yeah. of the harbor. So, we'll yeah. be good. But So, yeah. we'll set him up nice. But it was just the, shit, the shittiest month for you to... I'm like, oh, this is awesome. We got a brand new workbench for my dad, and then he couldn't come down yeah. here for like three I, weeks. Yeah. You know, and you know, and you're thinking, oh, I'm home. I'm home. You know, I have the COVID, and I have the quarantine <laughs> now. And like I said, I had like a, a, a stretch of the first week was rough, and then the second week I felt I had energy and everything else. You're thinking, ah, oh, I'm gonna build. Well, I didn't really get that much done, you know. Yeah, I, I, I like to say I got a lot done, but I did. and no, that's not true. I got the boat done. You got uh, a lot done, yeah. I got the tank done. I didn't really work on the boat. The boat was done before Christmas. It's all good. But, you know, but I, you know, I got some stuff done. The other, uh, you know, the, all right, let's move on. We do both. Yeah. Next question. This is actually a new first question from someone new for our group. Angus Van or Vaughn. I hope I'm saying it right. It might be Vaughn, V-A-N. Okay. But okay. Angus asks, by the way, welcome to the group, Angus. I, uh, I'm i happy you have joined, and I uh, hope you enjoy our show. Um, this may have already been asked in past episodes, so if no, ignore if need be. So you can tell we don't read the questions ahead of time, Angus. On your layout, what types of base material methods have you tried to use for? Uh, have you tried or used? 
What have it? For example, he says, for example, I've used a typical insulation foam board with sculpt mold, homemade, built up the terrain. I would love to try the cardboard plaster method. Um, Avoid that. We did not have luck with that, Angus. <laughs> in fact, there's a, probably one or two whole episodes about us putting okay. it in and tearing it out multiple let's, times. Let's put it this way. <laughs> it let's was not put pretty. It this way. Take take three five take two five year olds, give them a bucket with water and paper mache. Okay? And get it all set up. They're their sloppy paper mache. And whatever their cardboard forms, and let them just go to town and leave them go for an hour and say, "Hey, do slop us around." That's kind of what we did to him. <laughs> it looked like my daughters did it. Oh my god, we didn't do well with the. That was when we first started doing it. We we put the cardboard, we cut cardboard strips, and we kind of stapled them together. And made like a, a webbing, like a weaving thing with the mountain newspaper the, and the, stuff. Newspaper. Our hills were like at the most obscene. Uh, they were most the most unrealistic. Well, they were realistic if you were a mountain climber. <laughs> you know, they they were supposed. If we were to be, modeling the Alps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the angle on them was just way too steep, and uh, for only. And they were supposed to be an upper level of a city and a lower level of a city. And then you had some some uh, terrain that rose up to the upper level of the city. But it was, like, too steep. And it was just, yeah. It just didn't look right. It was goofy. Um, we thought at the time it looked awesome. Yeah. So and my what? my opinion is um, foam. foam and sculpt mold. Whether you make you your own sculpt and mold, what's that? Yep, foam and sculpt and mold. If you can do that, and, and then in certain places we do um, some uh, uh, drywall mud or yeah, but that's that. more like to that's cover our roads, yeah, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. covering of gaps and stuff. Right, right, exactly. But drywall mud I've used for rocks too. Foam for sure because yeah. it's so easy to the extruded foam, the pink, blue, orange, whatever the hell. But hey, on that year. by all um, means, Angus. He said he cut and carve. Angus said he would love to try the cardboard plaster method. Please don't let us persuade you from not trying you it. You may be an artist at it. Cuz yeah, you might end up being the the Bob Ross of plaster and I mean of of cardboard and plaster. By all means, go for it. You might be the best there's ever been. We just had yeah. terrible luck with we it. We didn't do well with plaster. <laughs> I couldn't get plaster to We used real plaster and I couldn't get it to I don't know. You it was just a bad news. It was a bad day. It was awful. It was just terrible. So, if, if you want a really good laugh, go back. We tore it all out. If you want a really good laugh, go back to an older episode and find. I think it was actually called the Plaster Disaster episode. Yeah. Yeah. Just look that up, and then you'll yeah. find out what my dad did. Absolutely. Um, it was it was the Plaster Disaster of the yeah. century. So. <laughs> well, that was a good question, Angus. And thank you for joining the group, Angus. Next one. Matthew Hankins, any model building related gifts received over the holidays? Um, yeah, we'll make this one quick. I got from my dad and mom uh, the uh, three part, the three different sets of glue. The one was the Insta set. One was the the CA glue that you got. CA me. glue because you had you didn't have CA glue. I've never used it ever. You got to do this stuff, man. You got to try it because you're gonna you, you're gonna you're gonna love it. You're going to say, oh, my God, this is the best thing ever. But that's all I got from you. Um, Yeah, and I didn't – you know what I got for – aside from the paints and things I need for my tank that I bought on my own, as far as a gift goes, I got nothing in regards of – Well, no, I got you that little knife. Lisa doesn't – my wife doesn't buy me stuff or nobody – I got you that little knife. Oh, that's right. Yes, you did. But I mean – you did. I got the knife. That's cool. Wow, you already forgot about it. No, it's it's it's, uh, it's one of those knives you can stick your finger through uh, the hole, and yeah, that didn't sound good. <laughs> Listen, guys, he was not excited because he already forgot about it. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it's a it's a cool, it's a small miniature knife, and um, it's made. Uh, it's called um, made by. It's called Slice, and then it's it's contoured. You stick your finger through, and you can put your. It, it holds on. Yeah, it's it's very small. It, it allows you better precision 
You're going to have to look it up. Maybe we'll take a picture and show you. But um, yeah, that's what you got me. Uh, I I um, I don't know. I uh, We have everything we need. I, yeah, I don't really need anything right now. I got so much stuff I got to get done. And uh, I did get the diorama base. That's a trip to my like we were talking about, but that's a you know a, a gift for myself for the way back. I bought that two months ago, you know. So it's like I'm just you know it's um I, I don't know. I, I really didn't get myself anything other than a couple paints and things, and it's just not um something. Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we really don't get a lot of. We're pretty gifts. set. We don't buy each other. Like I bought stuff for Brett, but the, the it's like little bought, stuff, knickknacks. Yeah, it's things for our tools, little tools for a workbench yeah. or something. That we, you know, we've tried it, but the other guy didn't. So we, you know, you know well, here's something. Yeah, that I like so. All right, you know, next other- next question, Ed Horst. Besides the January kit build contest, what are possible thoughts for more contests? Ooh, well. Also, um, along with that, what are thoughts on continued live builds? Um, uh, we're gonna do. We have a live build in the works. Yeah. I think we talked about yes. it earlier in the fall. Um, we have to get together with. Uh, um, uh, we're gonna do. Wiley's we're working on it cavern. with my mount models. With my mount models, so we're gonna get together um, and talk to them and see what we can work out and how we gotta set it up and work it. I'll try and do something like that in the next week or two because uh, you know I, I definitely want. Uh, to get Ron, get with Ron, and I don't want to hold him up either. And we want to get this rolling. You yeah. Know? So we'll we'll try and get that set up and working. We will so that, have information on it here uh, soon. Right. You know, and then outside of that, I mean, you know, we we it's not that we don't want to do live builds, um, but I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, they they take a lot out of us because we do them during the week, and then we have to do the podcast too, and it takes a lot of our our, our evening time up uh, that we could be doing a lot of things. Yeah. So, uh, but we we do want to do this one. It's uh, especially this one because it's a why it's named after us. We gotta say it's, it's a and it's a cool ass building it's designed for us. <laughs> it's so cool and um, and I, and I have been dying. Brett's done it, but I have yet to build one of his kits, and I am excited about that. I've done and two I, now. Yeah, I know you have. I did and, uh, uh, Skip's bait and tackle, Skip's bait and tackle, and Skip's yeah. bait and tackle, and the Pulsar's plumbing. Right, Direct- I've seen what you've done and what you had to work with, and how those kits are. I can't wait to dig my dig my fingers in and just do it. You know. So. Um, next one is from Greg Leipert. Um, uh-huh. I know you like firehouses, but what era slash age fire trucks are you hoping to find? Nineteen uh, forties. Late thirties, thirties, forties. Yeah, even is I have some already. I mean, I well, one. well, here with fire. Yeah. So what's what's cool about fire trucks? So I have a third nineteen thirties fire. But truck. what's cool about fire trucks, Dad, is we can do twenties, thirties, and forties, because yeah. like I mean, even today when you look at yeah, fire trucks, fire truck. yeah, fire trucks are a very expensive apparatus. Right. So they don't and, buy them, and every fire year. departments hold on to them for quite some time, especially yeah. like local mean, you know, local municipalities. They're going to hold on to stuff like that for a while because you might be talking, even in the 30s and 40s, you're talking about a sizable chunk of change for a fire sure. truck. Sure, absolutely. So, you know, we can, and they maintain, and fire departments maintain their trucks very well. I already well. got two or three fire trucks. I just haven't built them yet. I don't have the fire, I had the fire trucks. I just don't have a house. Well, I have one firehouse. You do. From the Campbell's one, but you're looking for a different style too. Yeah, that Campbell's one doesn't, I don't know if it's going to fit our style. Why won't it? Yeah. I, it might. It might. Dad, it won't fit our style. It's a clapboard siding building. Oh, okay. Ha- gotcha. Our whole city's clapboard side. Well, I, I, yeah. I guess it'll be. Right. Trust me. It'll fit. But okay. we can have one on either side of the city. I want to get a good brick one. We have a sizable enough city to put one Five on. Either. Scale models. We have a size. Build that Ed Puzlaz one and sell it for us. We have a sizable enough city to have multiple firehouses. Yeah. So. I'll build mine. I'll put mine on the more industrial outskirts side of town. And then the if we ever find another one, hint, hint, um, then we can always put it on the other side of town. We've been pushing him at that, man. He's going to get tired of us. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's the style and era we're looking for. Yeah, yeah. Um, next one is from Greg. Also, where would you put a flying pig on your layout? He's referencing um, oh. the – 
the the mini prints from last Dude, I week. I had no clue. I was thinking about that same thing. I like Scott Perry's answer. I'm sorry, yeah. Scott. Yeah, Scott says near any political office. Oh yeah, <laughs> we don't have political office. So, but but we you know no matter who you are politically, that's a good joke. I like that. Put it on a courthouse. We could put it at the courthouse where all the One pigs three. are, where all the flying pigs are. It's like a pork. What do they call that? Pork be- pork belly, pork barreling. Pork barreling. Pork barreling. We'll put it near the pork barreling. Near where all the where all the politicians are. So uh, no matter who you are, that's a funny joke. Uh, and that is the most political we ever have and ever will get on our podcast, right there. That's right. That's right. We skirt both at we skirt it and then we hit both sides and leave. All right. Um, <laughs> Dave Cruzwick asks, "Who do you have lined up for future guests?" Hmm. Um, I don't well, know. I got some stuff. That's my dad's works. department. I gotta confirm it. You gotta and, go to um, my dad's department for that. Um, we do have some people coming on. Uh, we have. I did talk. I, earlier before the holidays, I, I talked to Frank about doing something in July. Well, you Frank know we got to get Jake on soon. And, and we got to get Jake on, definitely. Jake and, and Dave. Yeah. We should right. get Jason on here again. Yes. Um, and, uh, but, yeah, I mean. But those we'll, guys are. We'll start getting in that again. Yeah, those guys are those guys are good pretty much any time we ask them. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I wouldn't mind if Jake and, and Dave are up for it eventually. I know they got a lot. They probably have a lot planned. But it would be kind of cool to do an East meets uh, a West meets East, mm-hmm. and jump on their podcast. I want to see if I can't uh, get some. Re- There's a couple that we haven't had on in a long, long time, and I repeat, said I want to get back as a repeat. Um, Kathy Malat is one I want to see if that I can get hold fun. of her. Uh, I want to talk to her again because uh, I she's she's done some stuff recently, uh, and now now they had that. Uh, modeling TV show they do over there. They've had a couple seasons since we talked to her, and I want to see because uh, she talked about it right before it was about the start. That's when we talked to her. Yeah, and uh, she was talking about the show. Jeez, that was a long time ago. After, yeah. So now I want to. Um, it's a. It's like like a, a, we want to catch up with her. Yeah, I want to catch up with her. I want to talk to her a little bit about uh, her Star Wars modeling and stuff. So I, I, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll contact out to her, see, see if she's ready to do that again. But don't worry. I know she's a lot busier than what she used to be. So Don't worry, though. We will not disappoint in 2021. We'll, yeah, I guarantee you we'll find, we'll find some good guests. All right. Next question is from Jim Lassiter. I need a good train show. Any input? I don't know. I don't know. What? He needs a good train show. <laughs> train show. Yeah, I, I, Thomas the Tank. Thomas the Tank has a good show. I think they're on PBS. Oh my gosh, um, Dad! What? I don't think he means TV show. I think he means like a in person show. Oh, a train show, train show. <laughs> uh, I'm a you, dumbass, man. Okay. Um, so, he knew. My dad knows better, guys. He, okay. you know this. Um. Bernard actually went on. I miss him. I miss the train shows too, Jim. There's a side note. I miss seeing you at the train show. I know. Hey, guess what, guys? The next time there's a train show in our area and we can make it to it, um, we will post it well in advance and we will have a – I think we should have a meetup. I miss all my friends. When we're all that we see at the shows, you people that stop – you are listeners that stop and visit us when we're at the shows. And talk and met, listen. You know, so I think I miss all that when when we're allowed to do that. Whether it's fall, it whether it's fall of this year or spring of 2022, I don't know when it's going to be, <laughs> but but the first time that we're able to make it, yep, to a in person show and we're able to get to it, yep. um, logistically, we will post it well in advance, and we will. I think we should schedule a meetup for our, all oh. the listeners. And not just, and not just for you guys to talk to us, but for everyone. I think what was really fun the last time we did that was for all of you guys to talk to all of everyone else that listens in and interacts on the overtime page and or the overtime group, and you know just get everyone back together. Um, we will post that well in advance when we are going to be doing that because I think we'll meet up. And we so we we we'll go out. Maybe you got that was a blast we'll when we did that at Timonium. That was a blast. Yep, we all went out to dinner. A bunch of us stayed at the same hotel. We we uh, we they had a bar down there with the they got a couple uh, drinks. The chilies, the chilies at the hotel had a big bar, so we all just sat around there, 
shot the shit and drank some beers and and uh, and, and not just that we and, did the, we did the meet up at George's we did a couple things like that yeah so the yeah. next the very first opportunity where it's safe to do it for everybody yep because that's the other thing we want everyone to be safe I love that part of this hobby but we want everyone yeah. to be safe as well right. right so the very first opportunity that we have available where it's safe to do so yep. we will announce when and where. We will be meeting up because I don't honestly I don't think it's going to be too much longer. Um, you know I think we're going to go through we're going through like the deep another spell of it right now just with winter and flu season and everything. Yep. But you know uh, you know I I got I got my first round of my vaccine the other week. Mm-hmm. Uh, more people are going to be getting vaccinated here soon. Um, and then just just the just the general rule of numbers and we don't talk about this very much but. No. I, I think in the I think in the you know in the short We're term praying and hoping, I know? think in the short term we pray and hope that and I have hope that we're going to be be able to do these things here in the near future. Yeah. You know, whether it be 6 8 months, 10, a year from now, maybe next spring we're going to be I don't know, I don't know. I don't want to say anything about that, but but right. I you know, I, I think we're going to be we're, the next opportunity we have to have a meetup we're going to do it. We're going to post about it. We're going to make it a thing. Anyone that's listening that tra- can travel or will travel or if we can travel, we'll do a meetup and um, our listeners will be able to get out together. So I know so it Jim, wasn't – it really wasn't what Jim asked, but, but – No, it is kind of. and Well, in a way. But there's some well, – you know, but we, Bernard we – got, We got to meet Jim when we were up at George's and it was it was awesome, you know, yeah. to have him there with us and – and, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, have all those guys, we all ate dinner together a couple of times actually. Yep. And, um, and then we, uh, you know, saw George's layout and spent that time. I don't together. think the lady at that restaurant on that Friday night liked us very much. She didn't. We were a little loud. Yeah. We were pretty but loud. We, were pretty, <laughs> we had a pretty long table. We had a little round. We had a rowdy group too. A lot of people we mentioned on the show or, or at the table and it, it got a little, that fun. was a great so time. A lot of people that were guests on our show, uh, were at that table as well. I mean, um, we man, there was a lot of people there. Mm-hmm. Jason yeah. was there. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Jim and Dave Kruzwick. Dave Kruzwick was uh, there, and his wife and Hugh and her her husband Gary were there, and we had man, oh, we was just loaded. We had uh, a lot of people. I mean, well, Matt. Um, well, no, that wasn't the show. That was when we went up to the to. to um, George's. George's. That was well. I thought you meant George's. Yeah, man, that was a well, cool meetup. Gary were down at the show too. So it was Dave Kruzwick, Jason, Brad Logrick came. Yeah, well, Brad, Brad was, was at Dave's. I mean, Brad was at George's. Right, right. Man, yeah, I miss. Just, man, I miss all those guys. We need to get yeah. back. To, we all need to get back together then. Yeah, it was great. We had Jim Donovan and uh, and his wife were there, and that was uh, awesome. So was, we had a lot oh, of and was Jim a Donovan mom. was there, but also we had um, we had. Uh, um. Oh my gosh! I feel terrible for even. He's the guy that got us George. He talked. He helped talk George into it. Um. Oh my I goodness! Saw, I saw George. Into no, no, no. It. He oh, was no. Oh my gosh! I feel terrible for the guy that did the um the lighthouse I made. The what? He had the lighthouse. Oh man! I feel terrible for even. Forget about it. We're skipping it. The Dog Bar Lighthouse. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. From Atlantic yeah. Scale Models. Hal Reynolds. Hal Reynolds. Hal was there. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was a good time. Yeah. And, um... It was amazing. It was a lot of good people were there with us. Um, anyways, that has nothing to do with train shows, but we will have a meetup next time. And then, actually, Brad, Lo- um, Bernard Helen actually got on there and actually was sharing some stuff for some virtual train shows. So, uh, that's on the Overtime page if you want to check that out. Yep. All right. Bernard then asks, "What's your favorite color? What's huh? your favorite color? My favorite color. Um, I would have to say blue. Oh, that's weird. You're weird. Why? Why is weird? I'm Why just, is blue I'm, weird? I'm just kidding. My favorite color is green. Oh, okay. that's kind of weird. I don't know. It's weird. But uh, okay. anyways, that's that's okay. Speaking of Brad, Brad asks, "Can you interview Scotty Mason and ask him why he fell off of planet Earth?" <laughs> I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I've I reached out uh, private messages and stuff to Scotty, so 
Uh, I'd love for him to return maybe? a message and we can talk about maybe getting him on as a guest. I'd love to have him on. Maybe, maybe not. I have no idea, Brad. We would love to have him on as well because I have questions for Scotty. Yeah. Um, both about his history in the model railroading community, about his podcast, everything Scotty did. I mean, he's a legend. So I would love to get Scotty on. Definitely. Um, what do you guys – this is from Scott Perry. What do you guys do to correct warping on walls – or roofs after it happened. Yes, I had a bracing fail. Um, so I usually put some kind of water on the back side of it. I, I've never had luck it, with that. Flatten it. I, I have. I've never had luck with that. Yeah. So, I, I, well, yep. Scott, for me, what I do is I re I I or paint the back. Hand. I repaint it on the front or back, and yep. then I get a really heavy ass weight, and while it's still wet. I cover. Wow. I, I slam that weight down on it and let it sit overnight. I wouldn't slam it down. Well, I yeah. won't slam it. I gently place the weight on it <laughs> and then let it dry overnight. Yeah. Um. That's that's what I do. Uh, yeah. I yeah. think sometimes you need a little bit of, a little bit of that uh, um, extra weight on there to help correct a warping issue. Yep. You gotta do like a, a rain dance and then. Uh... Yeah, rain dances help as well. <laughs> also, you know, if, you the, prayer, if you wear the if you wear the right <laughs> if you wear if you if you put the right healing crystals near it too, it, perfect. It works great. Yep. Also, if your chakras are aligned and uh, you know you read your horoscope for the day, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? How many times you put something under weights? And you're sitting there and you and you say to yourself, "Please, please, God, please, God, please, God," and then you walk away and come back and you go, "Oh, good, it's great." Yeah. You know? Or yeah, you have that fear until you check it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Anything that you can do to make the forces align to help work. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next one's from James Powell. Do you guys miss me? Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Uh, yeah, we miss you. We, every day, sure, James. We miss you. James. My first, my first thought, James, is when I when I wake up in the morning is, damn, I wish I could talk to James today. Yep. Um, yep. No, but we do. We, I'd actually like to get you on the show here soon. Uh, 3D printing. This one's from Dazzy J. 3D printing. What's your best tip? Mine is to have a stringent point, a stringent post slash print slash cleaning workflow. Yes, Dazzy, that is, um, 3D printing in my short experience with it so far is making sure that you are, um, very diligent in cleaning everything. Um, you can do all the setup and adding as many braces and yada yada as you can. And, and, and you can have the perfect 3D print. The perfect 3D print. But if you don't clean everything really, really, really thorough when you're done, yeah, it's going to be a mess forever. Um, huh. Whether it's in your – if you're using a resin printer and it's in your tray – that you put your resin in or your printing surface. If you don't p- clean that thing real nice, you'll have leftover dried up resin on it, and it's it's just awful. So if you don't clean that thing right away and, and you're not on it, which I know my dad probably thinks is weird for me because sometimes I let stuff get a little dirty down here, but that 3D printer, man, I'm like, I'm on it. When it's done printing, I clean that thing out, empty it, take care of it, because if you don't, you're going to have a major problem on your hands. Yeah, oh yeah. So for me, like Dazzy said, um, it is about making sure I am extra clean with everything. Um, And it also affects the quality of your print. So the cleaner you are and the cleaner you keep that equipment, the cleaner your print and the nicer your prints will be. So, yeah, that's what I got. Uh, Scott Horgan, and this is the last question, and this will probably wrap up our evening. Have you used or heard of exterior foam coat? No, I have not. I've never heard of this from the yeah. hot. F- what? I've never heard of it either. From hot, from the hot wire foam factory, exterior foam coat. Huh. I do have a hot wire thing it for cutting foam. Protects and beautifies. Well, I could use anything that beautifies me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I've never heard of that, Scott. No, enlighten us. If you can elaborate on that before our next show, I will talk yeah. about it next week. Yep. Um, but I've not heard of that. And then and, and what does it do here? I'm trying to look on their website for it. You put a product link on. 
Um, rock hard coating for all your outdoor and indoor foam projects. This stuff is super tough. Not sand. It's not. It is not sandable. Has a rough stone feel when dry and can be troweled smooth or brushed to make a super rough finish. Can also be applied with a hopper gun. I've never even heard of this. What's a hopper gun? I don't know. <laughs> it's available in twenty five and fifty pound containers. Holy shit! Huh? Well, no, I've never heard of this stuff. You, please enlighten me more, Scott, on this or if you've used it let me know if you have any luck with it yeah no that's brand new to me cool all right guys well hey this is actually almost two hours so yep that's a long it was a long show way longer than i thought we got on here tonight and said oh it's gonna be an hour it's hockey season baby i want to watch some hockey right so that's where we're going now so everybody till next week have a good night thanks for listening thanks for listening and enjoy your weekend build 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 Peace out. And relax and enjoy. Game on. Later.